going on everyone my name is Andrew welcome back to a brand new exciting video today we're doing another editing transition tutorial it's been a little while since I've done like a transition tutorial so I thought we would do one today now funny enough this video is once again inspired by Ryan Nangle if you guys don't know who he is I've talked about him a lot he's a youtuber who makes Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials and every once in a while I like to take one of those tutorials that he's made for Final Cut Pro and show you guys how to do them inside of After Effects I'll link his video down below so anyways guys if you enjoy this video I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up also follow me on instagram at andrew jmes and without further ado guys let's hop to the computer and start talking about this effect all right everyone so we are on the computer now inside of adobe premiere pro and we've got a few different clips right here we've got this first shot of the door obviously you're gonna need a shot like that and then the next shot is my friend josiah running when i was back in california by the way guys a california vlog is dropping soon don't worry so we got a few different clips after that from california but the main two shots that we need is none of this stuff we just need the door shot and then the running shot of Josiah. Now a couple quick things to mention. First off, you guys can download this in the description down below if you guys want to download this footage so you can follow along. The other thing I want to mention is if you are doing this at home, the main thing I would say is the second shot needs to be like a wide shot. I wouldn't suggest trying to do this transition to like a shot like this or to a shot of like some close-ups or even a shot like this. Nothing super close up. I would say you're going to want to transition to a wide angle shot, a master shot, something to sort of show off the location and specifically just show that the location has changed because that's like the whole effect so you want to make sure that the audience knows that that being said guys i'm going to go ahead and select these two different clips right click and hit replace with after effects composition okay cool so now that we're inside of adobe after effects i'm going to go ahead and change the quality of my playback to quarter and we're going to go ahead and find where this mask sort of begins which is about about right here is the first keyframe of the mask. So I'm going to go ahead and hit G on my keyboard or go up and select the pen tool up here and we're going to draw our first little mask. I'll put one point there, another point there, another point there, and another point there. Just a little mask around it and there we go. Now we've completed the mask. Now if you've never used masks before, when you finish off the mask you can see it's excluded out all the other footage outside of the parameters that we just set. Now this is good. This is what we want in the end. We're gonna have to invert it though, but this is what we want in the end. However, when you're working to mask it out, you want to be able to see the footage that's in the center. You want to be able to see the whole clip and just draw an outline. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and select this add and actually change it to none. We'll change it back later, but for now it's just helpful for masking. The other thing we want to do is go to our mask path. So you just hit M on your keyboard to bring that up and select the stopwatch next to it and that creates our first keyframe. Now what we're going to do is go to the last frame of this clip, which is about right here. And we're going to go ahead and adjust the mask for that frame. Nothing too crazy, just adjusting the mask around this door frame. So there we go. Now we've got our last keyframe and we've got our first keyframe. Now to make the best masks, the best smoothest masks inside of After Effects or really any kind of software, you always want to try to minimize the amount of keyframes you use. What I used to do, and this is terrible, is I would just go frame by frame adjusting the mask one, two, three, just like that sequentially. Now what that does is it ends up making this sort of stuttery, glitchy sort of mask. It's not smooth at all. So what you want to do to get the smoothest masks is create the least amount of keyframes possible. So what I try to do is I start off with the first keyframe, I make that, then I make the second keyframe, and then after that I sort of just start splitting the difference. So now what I'm going to do is go halfway, about halfway between these two keyframes and adjust from there. So I'll go ahead and select those two, drag them over, something like that, and then I'll, dra and then I'll adjust these two. I'll drag those over. So now we've got three keyframes and what am I going to do now? I'm going to split the difference once again. So I'll go halfway in between these two keyframes and we'll create another one. Drag those over, drag this bottom one over as well, adjust on the side, split the difference. Let's see. Perfect. We'll adjust that one, split the difference again. And there we go. And there we go, that's looking really, really smooth. So now we're gonna go ahead and see what that's actually looking like. So we'll go ahead and take our second footage, drag it underneath. We'll go over to this top layer, go back to none where we changed it previously and change it to add. And now you can see, boom, there we go. Now we're not quite finished because we need to adjust this last keyframe out. So we'll bring that over 
there, split the footage right here and delete the mask on this first clip. Okay, and there we go. So now you can see this is actually looking pretty smooth. So I come forward, boom, open the door and we're out. Now we have definitely a couple issues we're gonna have to work through. The first thing we can do is select F on our keyboard and that brings up our mask feather. Now you don't wanna go crazy with this. I'm probably just gonna add a 10 pixel feather. Um, sometimes people, you know, just bring it all the way up and then it just starts to just not look very real. So let's, let's actually go with 20. I think 20 is a safe bet. Not too much, but definitely helping a bit. The other thing that we could do is we could go through and try to adjust for all these little mistakes like this white that's showing through right here. Or what we could do is select MM on our keyboard and that brings up our mask expansion. That brings up all, if you hit MM on your keyboard, that brings up all of the mask options. And what we can do is I'm just going to select this mask expansion and we're just going to bring it forward a bit and try to get rid of those those parts that we don't want. So you can see now we just got rid of all the parts that we didn't want and it's looking a lot smoother. Now the last thing I'm going to do is go up to layer new adjustment layer and I'm going to add the CC force motion blur effect and that's going to just help to smooth out this door motion and make it look a little bit more natural. Alright everyone, so there you have it. That is the effect. That is how to do this super cool like door opening transition. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. And once again guys, the vlog from California is hopefully going to be dropping sometime next week. So watch out for that. But real quick guys, we actually have a sponsor for this video which is Swagbucks. Now here's the thing. We all buy stuff online. Like buying stuff online has become super super normal. In fact, I recently got this like fog machine type thing. This is a haze machine, not a fog machine. I'll go ahead and like turn it on and heat it up. So I've got this little controller for it right here and here I can control if it's on or off and then I can control the output of the haze. And as you guys can see it is taking off right now just emitting all of this haze. And the cool thing about haze is essentially what it does and you'll probably be able to see it is it creates like volumetric lights. So if you guys ever see like those light beams in movies or music videos and things like that they're using haze machines to create a medium for the light to be seen in, if that makes sense. But the point is, it's not about the haze machine, it's that we all get stuff online all the time, but we don't always get the best deals. I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely like Googled and searched around and scoured the internet to try to find like coupon codes for the things that I'm buying. So what the swag button does is it takes away all the stress of trying to find those coupon codes. And when you add the swag button, you can just click it when you're about to buy something and it automatically applies all of the best deals. So it just saves you all the hassle of trying to find those coupon codes and you know you're getting the best deal you possibly can but the thing is even if you don't get a promo even if the product you're getting doesn't have a coupon you still get cash back swagbucks has already given away 300 million dollars cash back so so click down below to add the swag button for free and get ten dollars when you make your first purchase using the swag button all right and there you guys have it that is about it there's a lot of haze going on right now i'm sorry if there's like smoke going through my face while i was saying all of that but thank you guys so much for watching this video let me know what you guys think of this effect of the door opening transition i think it's super Super, super cool and there's just a lot of different things you can do with it if you guys enjoy this kind of travel style photography videography content definitely check me out on Instagram at Andrew JMES let me know what videos you guys want to see in the future get outside film a video make a difference and I'll see you guys in the next one peace